words that were the prime reason I went from this to this. Let's learn about a calorie deficit. What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess if you're new. If you're old, welcome back. I'm so happy to have you here. So if you are new here and don't know a lot about me, I started my weight loss journey back in 2021 where I lost over 50 pounds. I started going to the gym, weightlifting, moving my body more, spending time outside, just changed my whole lifestyle and healthy habits. Most importantly, I started eating better. And if you aren't new here, you know how much I preach calorie deficit during weight loss because it is the only way you are going to lose fat. And that's exactly what we're going to be getting into in this video. What is a calorie deficit? How are we going to identify that number? Stick to our calorie number, lose fat, make this sustainable, and turn it into a lifestyle. If you're just starting a weight loss journey and don't know much about what you should be eating, what is a calorie deficit? How do you calculate that number? If you want eating tips to make this lifestyle more sustainable? This is the video for you. I'm basically just going to be giving you a rundown about what is a calorie deficit? How do I calculate that number? Some eating tips and hacks to make this a lifestyle sustainable and get you to your goals. If you haven't watched my video about how to start your weight loss journey, that might be a good place to start just so I can give you a little better of a rundown. This is just going to specifically be diving into the eating habits you you need to take on to lose fat and as i mentioned in my how to start your weight loss journey video i just want to be able to get you guys from point a to point b as quickly safely and effectively as possible because i know that's what you're all looking for when i first started my journey i was just like cut the bullshit cut the crap i want to know how to get from this to this now all right guys let's hop into this okay so let's start with the basics what is a calorie deficit we have our handy dandy whiteboard right behind us going to be jotting down some information so a calorie deficit basically means you're eating fewer calories than you are burning so this is the only way you will lose fat if you do not move your body if you do not exercise but you are eating fewer calories than you are burning you will lose fat about a calorie deficit is you want to find ways to make this sustainable which we will be getting into in a later portion of this video if you're finding no extra ways to kind of keep those calories burnt you're just going to find yourself resorting back to your old habits not eating the calories you're supposed to be eating because it is possible and not see any progress so i heard an analogy a while ago when i first started my journey about this water cup you want to picture your calorie deficit like this so you have a cup of water. The water is the calories you're eating. So let's just make this easy. Let's say you have to eat 2000 calories a day. You're eating calories. You're filling up your water cup. This is breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert. And then you get to the end of the night and you feel a binge coming. So you binge eat. This is your 2000 calorie mark, the top of the cup. You overeat. Flowing, the water's coming out of the cup. So this means... Once the water comes out of the cup, you're gaining fat. You want to keep the calories you're supposed to be eating in the cup. Keep the water in the cup. If you overeat, you're going to overflow the cup, thus gain fat. Always want to make sure you're eating within your calorie limit. Don't spill the water out of the cup. Don't eat more so that way it overflows and you end up gaining fat. This right here, this right here is 2,000 calories. It's super important that during our calorie deficit, we find ways that we don't have to overflow this cup, that we don't have to eat under this cup. That way, every day we feel satisfied and nourished to keep going the next day. A lot of people look at a calorie deficit like a chore. This is hard. Eating way too less, yada, yada, yada. It doesn't have to be that way. You can still eat the food you love. You can still make it sustainable to ensure that you keep this going so you can actually lose the amount of weight you want to lose. When the cup does overflow and you eat over your calories, that is going to place you in a calorie surplus. And this is how you will gain weight. If you overpour the water in your cup, you are in a calorie surplus. You make sure the water stays in the cup, nothing overflows, you are in your calorie deficit, you are eating within your calorie range. I hope that analogy helped you guys out. I didn't really explain it super well, but I remember that really helped me when I first started my journey. All right, so now that we know what a calorie deficit is, we have a little bit of visualization. Let's figure out how to calculate your calorie number. The next point we're going to be getting into is how are we going to identify this number we need to be on for our calorie deficit? So I'm going to be going through this with you on my Mac. You don't need to be doing this on a computer. You literally can just do it on your phone. It takes five minutes. So what I'm going to do is go online to a online calorie calculator. I did use this one when I first started my weight loss journey. It's just called calculator.net. So as you can see, it just asks you some basic information here. I'm going to be using all my past information from when I first started my journey. Ask you your age. I was 17 when I started. Female. Height, 5'5". Five five, and then I was about 210 pounds activity level 
sedentary. I was not active at all when I first started my journey. I was exercising only when I was told to, which was like never. Like my family would literally ask me to go on hikes and I would dread that. Obviously, if you're watching this video, you do have the urge to start moving a little more, eating better and just developing some healthy habits. After you input your age, your height, your weight, gender, and then your activity level, you can just press calculate. And this is going to be showing me the number of calories I should be eating day to day. So this gets a little tricky. You don't want to be eating so low of calories that you feel starved and it's going to lead you to like binge eating or overeating late at night or just throughout the week. I never recommend to anyone to eat under 1500 calories. The thing about weight loss is you're so used to eating at a very high number of calories. So I was probably eating around three, 4,000 calories a day. When I started eating at 1600 calories, which was the number I started with with my weight loss journey, I saw a massive difference, not because the number was so low, but just because I was going from such a high number and dropping it down by more than half. So for me, with my past information, my height, my weight, activity level, I was gonna be eating around 1600 calories a day you should be losing about a pound a week. This right here says 1,586. I'm just going to round that up to 1,600. Okay, so now that we know our calorie number we should be eating every day, we are going to be tracking this number using an app like MyFitnessPal. So I'm just going to make like a fake little account here. It'll just ask you your goals. We want to lose weight. We also probably want to gain muscle, modify your diet. You basically just want to go through this and answer this all to your best ability, everything that you want to obtain throughout this whole journey. Okay, so I put all the information in from the calorie calculator into here, my same height, weight, all that good stuff. It did say my calorie net goal is now 1660, which is fine. You can always adjust that in the app. You're going to be tracking your breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, drinks, anything you put into your body on my fitness pal so for breakfast press add food and again i do this normally on my phone i just want to show you on the computer for like a wider situation so let's say i have rolled oats search rolled oats there's also a feature where you can scan the exact barcode on the food you're eating which is insanely helpful you're tracking what you're eating on a food scale just all the measurements in grams ounces whatever works best for you and that food product let's say i have i normally have about 52 grams of oats gonna be putting that in there adding food to diary it'll show you the exact macros you have eaten and how many you have remaining. This is going to be how you track your calories, how you calculate them and ensure you are sticking to this 90 to 95% of the time. Consistency, consistency, consistency is big here. Okay, so now we're in my kitchen and we're gonna be talking about some eating tips for your calorie deficit. Obviously, you're on a calorie deficit, this all has to do with eating. So the first tip I have is what I like to call sticking to base foods. So I know social media sometimes glorifies what it looks like to be on a calorie deficit. All these foods that look amazing with great colors and just looks delicious and like a chef made it. I take a little part in that. I obviously do that now, but when I first started my deficit, my meals did not look very exciting. They were a little boring, a little repetitive. It was what got the job done? And that's what you're gonna have to learn. What gets the job done? You can't always be eating foods that look good and like have little decorations, just eat Eat the foods that will get you to your goal. You can start by structuring your plate around a protein, a carb, and a vegetable. Chicken, rice, and vegetables, or steak, rice, and vegetables, or fish, potatoes, and vegetables. Something like that. Something that's simple will get the job done. My second tip is volume eating and high protein foods. I'm sure you've all heard it before. High protein gets the job done. This is what keeps you full. If you're on a calorie deficit, the goal is to not just lose weight and lose fat. You also want to be gaining muscle and making sure you're staying full. And this is how a calorie deficit will be sustainable. Make sure you're eating around a gram of protein per pound of body weight. High protein foods. Let's talk about processed food for a minute. Kodiak cakes I love, Quest chips, protein powder. These are just simple ways to make sure we get that protein in. I have protein powder here, PB2, Quest chips. <sighs> Deliciousness. Some more natural high protein food, eggs, cottage cheese, some ground turkey here. All these foods that are very high in protein and lower in calories, that will keep you full. Also, volume eating. Volume eating basically means lower calories for more food. So toward the end of the night, I tend to get a little more hungry because you're on a calorie deficit, you're gonna be eating less. So there's going to be times you're feeling a little hungry here and there. You should not be starving, but it is okay to feel a little hungry. You're eating less. But toward the end of the night, if I feel a little bit hungry, I'm thinking, okay, what's a high volume food I could eat? Something that's low calorie that I can eat a lot of. 
cottage cheese, fruit like strawberries, blueberries, popcorn's really good, rice cakes, foods that are super low in calories that you can eat a good amount of. It's also super important throughout your meals. When we're thinking of your base foods, I say incorporate a protein, a carb, and a veggie. Veggies should make up like 50% of your plate. You can have as many veggies as you want. Just load those up there so you could fill up on the good stuff, on the low calorie things. Tip number three is meal prepping. When you're first starting your calorie deficit, pick three dishes you really enjoy. And this might take a little bit of experimentation. You might not be meal prepping the second you start your calorie deficit. But it really helps. Just pick one day out of the week and meal prep for the whole week. I do lunch and dinner for some days. Even as somebody who's not really even on a calorie deficit anymore, I kind of eat in maintenance calories. I still love meal prepping because again, it's easy, it's convenient. I just warm it up, pop it in the microwave, and I don't have to think about it. Also, as somebody who has been at a calorie deficit for a while and is delve into the world of weight loss i do like boring foods honestly i like to stick to boring foods i love my ground turkey love my chicken love my rice pretty much every week i always meal prep the same turkey taco bowl it's literally ground turkey black beans and corn in a container and then i just add lettuce taco sauce and cottage cheese it is so simple but again it gets the job done i've talked about this before and i know eating is a lot deeper than i'm about to make it sound but you just have to think what are the foods that can just get me to point a to point b what do i not have to worry about think about cook about like i'm eating this food to nourish me during my day-to-day -day task in the gym activity with my family what are the foods i love but also the foods that are simple and will get me to my goals on that note my fourth tip is balance this will not be sustainable if there's no balance if you're not eating the foods you love you're not going to be able to keep up with this and that is just the hard truth my calorie deficit i was eating the food that supported my goals 90 and 95 percent of the time but there obviously were times here and there i would go out be with my family my mom would cook a homemade dinner that like wasn't that healthy and i would eat it you deserve to eat it you deserve to have balance you deserve to eat the foods you love because you're going on a weight loss journey and you love pizza it doesn't mean you're never going to eat pizza again that's just it just sounds crazy once you learn to balance these unhealthy foods snacks that you love into your diet it's also going to make you appreciate it when you eat it that much more a lot of people love to live by the 80 20 rule this basically means that 80 percent of the foods you eat throughout the day are in support of your goals and 20 percent are the foods you love i do really like this technique it ensures that you're still getting in that satisfaction of food you enjoy throughout the day while still keeping on track balance is so important because if you don't do this you will also reach a point of burnout you're just going to get sick of eating these healthy foods that you like have to eat and you're not going to want to eat it and then it's going to lead to binging at night taking a whole couple days out of your week and just binging on unhealthy foods make it sustainable that is the whole premise of this video making a calorie deficit sustainable and most importantly you need to stay consistent with your deficit to be able to incorporate those foods some of the time number five Cardio and steps. I know I wrote this in our case. I know everybody preaches going to the gym and weightlifting during calorie deficit, i.e. me. But cardio and getting your steps in is super beneficial to your calorie deficit and your weight loss journey overall. It'll just simply allow you to eat more. The way that works best for me is after every lift or before every lift, I do about 30 minutes incline walk on the treadmill. While I'm doing that, I just get worked on on my phone, answer emails. But at the end of the session, I have like 250 calories burned, so which means another 250 calories I could spend eating throughout the day, which is super nice. And this does not mean you have to walk on the treadmill for 30 minutes. You could take a walk outside with your dog, go on the Stairmaster, elliptical, jog, run outside, hike, whatever makes you happy just gets those extra calories burned. Okay, my sixth and final point is little things add up. Stop wasting your calories on Starbucks, beverages, coffee creamers, dressing sauces this is all just a waste of calories and there are a ton of swaps you could be making throughout your journey to make sure we save a little more calories up for example peanut butter versus pb2 peanut butter has about 200 calories for two tablespoons while pb2 only has 60. so this is a swap you could be making to make sure you save calories throughout your day to day another example instead of having in 130 calorie a cup of milk you could switch to something like almond milk which is only 30 calories a cup these things make a massive difference and you will quickly learn throughout your journey which things you do enjoy that you could swap into your diet that are lower calorie and higher protein and again this doesn't mean you need to eliminate the things you love when i used to go to starbucks back in 2021 i used to get a literal 600 calorie drink it was a venti white chocolate mocha vanilla sweet cream cold foam caramel drizzle extra caramel drizzle it was phenomenal it was really good 
now I just get like a grande iced coffee, a little sugar-free vanilla, almond milk, Splenda, and that's like 70 calories. You just have to start thinking in that mindset. What are some low calorie things you could swap in to those high calorie things you love? I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and a comment if it helped you. I wanted to make this video a little bit shorter and straight to the point. Again, just getting you from point A to point B quickly, safely, and effectively as possible. If you're on a calorie deficit, if you're on a weight loss journey, it is very possible to make this sustainable and to turn it into a lifestyle. You learn a lot by experiencing things yourself. So as many videos or tutorials you can watch, yes, they will help you, but also you just need to dive into it and get it done fail, learn, grow. It is all part of the process. Make sure you stay consistent. I'm not going to dive into this now, but we all know consistency is key. Patience is everything. Discipline. Make sure you stay on top of your goals. Remember why they're so important to you. Get it done because you got this. If you do need any more help starting your weight loss journey, getting into the gym, a little bit about mindset, more about eating and recipes. I do have a weight loss guide, which I will link in the description below. Also, make sure you give my social media accounts a follow. I post a ton of content about weight loss, gym, mindset, fitness, calorie deficit, all on those. I have a lot of good stuff to share. And if you love hearing me talk, you will see a lot of me on social media. So make sure you give those a follow. I'll put links for the calorie calculator on my fitness pal in the description. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you so much. Believe in yourself and get it done because I know you can. 2024 is right around the corner. Let's go smash those goals. I love you guys so much. I hope you all had a very happy Thanksgiving and I will see you next week.